In this video, I'm going to go over some of the topics of trigonometry. There's um, three main functions, the sine, cosine, and tangent are where we'll start, um, and how these relate to a right triangle. So the sine is more often written S-I-N, cosine, C-O-S, tangent, T-A-N. And the thing to remember with all of these is what they're, they're functions that you do to an angle, and then they're telling you about the ratios of lengths related to that angle. So, for example, if we have triangle ABC here, this is telling us that the sine of an angle is the side opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we're focused on angle A the si and we wanted to find the sine, we would need to know the length of this side that's opposite angle A and then the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. If we wanted to find the cosine of angle A, we would go to this side adjacent to angle A, the side that actually is touching angle A, divided by the hypotenuse. And then the tangent of angle A, we would look at the side opposite again, divided by the adjacent. So all of these would be ratios of the side lengths related to angle A. We could do the same exact thing if we're sticking with the same triangle we could focus on angle B instead. And we would get different results because for B, sine is still opposite over hypotenuse, but the side opposite B is this one. Hypotenuse is still the same. So the sine of B would be the length of this side over here divided by the hypotenuse. The sine, I'm sorry, the cosine of angle B would be the side adjacent to B divided by hypotenuse, and tangent would be opposite over adjacent. So the definitions stay the same, but you need to be clear about what angle you're looking for the sine, cosine, or tangent of. Let me do an example with some numbers in there, because I think that'll help make even a little more sense of some of this. So if this is still our triangle A, B, C, it's still a right angle. It has this box symbol down here to show that it's a right triangle. And why don't we, let's focus on angle A for this time. But let's say we have some actual numbers in here. We know that this side has a length of 3, this is 4, and this is 5. So that means that if we were finding the sine of angle A, according to this definition up here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's our angle A. Here's the side opposite, so 3 over 5. I'll just write this as the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine of angle A, this time we need to find adjacent over hypotenuse. So the side adjacent to A is right here over the hypotenuse. And then if we did the tangent, the last of these three functions, the tangent of angle A, we're going to take opposite over adjacent. So this would be 3 over 4. So these three definitions, sine, cosine, tangent, those need to be memorized. You need to know what, the, what ratios those are describing. There's a little, like, nonsense word, I guess you could think of it, that might help you. If you think of it as so, ka, toa. So so, ka, toa is telling you that the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So um, you, if you know those three definitions and then you're able to sort out what those things mean on a particular right triangle, that will let you find the sine, cosine, and tangent of different angles. One thing that you will sometimes need to use when you're working with these right triangles is something you'd seen before, the Pythagorean theorem. And this is for right triangles only. This tells us that for any right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b would be the lengths of the two sides. c has to be the hypotenuse. That's the one important piece here, that c is always the hypotenuse. And that means that it's the longest side Sometimes, though, you don't know for sure which is the longest side, depending how the triangle looks, but it's always 
opposite the right angle. So in this triangle, we've got our right angle over here. Here's the side that's opposite the right angle. So that side you know is the hypotenuse. Um, so let's say we had some numbers here. Let's say that in this particular case, the uh, hypotenuse is 13, side B is 12, but A, we don't know right now. So, and let's just call this triangle ABC like we've been doing. So if we were, say, trying to find the sine of angle A, we would need to know what that side is, and we don't yet. But we can get there. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem and say that A squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. And then we can just go through the math here. A squared plus 144 equals 169. We want to try to get this by itself. So we'll subtract the 144. So A squared will equal 25. We want A, though, not A squared. So we just need to take a square root of both sides of that equation. So if A squared is 25, that means that A would equal 5. So A equals 5 for that missing side. So now we can go ahead and find, say, the sine, the sine of angle A, because it's going to be the side opposite A over the hypotenuse. Or we could do the cosine of A, which is this side right here adjacent to A, over the hypotenuse. Or the tangent of A, which is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So sometimes you'll have to use the Pythagorean theorem first, and then you're all set up to do your trig definitions to find the sine, cosine, and tangent. One other thing I want to go over with you are three other trigonometric functions that are very much related to the first. So we have the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It's reciprocal is called the cosecant. So that's the hypotenuse over the opposite. For cosine, the reciprocal is the secant. hypotenuse over adjacent, and for tangent, its reciprocal is the cotangent, adjacent over opposite. So why don't we, let's just stick with the same numbers we had on that last triangle. We had a 5, a 12, and a 13 for triangle ABC. Let's focus this time on angle B up here because we'd already done everything for angle A. So let's do, for angle B, we can find the sine, cosine, and tangent, but then we can also find their reciprocals. So let's see if we're looking at the sine of angle B. That's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So then the reciprocal of function for that, the cosecant of B, is hypotenuse over opposite of this, right? So it's just the reciprocal of the sine. Sine is 12 over 13. Cosecant is 13 over 12. And the same, what if you found the cosine of B? That means you're going to take the side that's adjacent to B over the hypotenuse. Its reciprocal function is called the secant of B, and that's going to be 13 over 5. This is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. And then the last one we have is the tangent of B. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Its reciprocal is the cotangent of B, which is 5 over 12. Oops, sorry, this is adjacent over opposite. Okay, so that's the six basic trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and then their reciprocals, and how they work on a right triangle, so that if you know the three sides of a right triangle, you're able to find the sine, cosine, tangent of either of the other angles. Never, You wouldn't do it for the right angle, but you would do it for either of the other two angles. Um, 
And then also you can then get the reciprocal functions, the cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And that is all for now. I will stop there. Thanks.